Live from the Sands Convention Center, Las Vegas, Nevada, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering HP Discover 2015. Brought to you by HP. And now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to HP Discover, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, and this is the Cube. The Cube goes out to the events. We extract the signal from the noise. Check out hpdiscover.social for all the social buzz. We're bringing that this year to HP Discover. Bill Hilf is here. He's the Senior Vice President of HP Cloud, and he's joined by Gonzalo Uquilas, who is the Senior Vice President and GM of Senase, who is a utility out of Ecuador, right? So welcome to theCUBE. Thank Good you. Good to see you again, Bill, and Thank you thanks for coming on, Gonzalo. So Bill, uh, let's start with you. Uh, Helion, a lot of buzz on the show. Um, you guys have, have a keynote going on. Uh, you're taking over the Twitter sphere. All kinds of action and some announcements. So give us the update on, on Helion. I had a great, great event the other night. Five, six hundred customers line out the door. A lot of excitement right now with Helion. Yeah, well, that, it's good to be here again. I love coming on theCUBE. It's actually one of my favorite things to do here at Discover. Awesome. Uh, so it's good to see you guys again. Um, so interestingly, for personally, this is my two year anniversary today at HP. <laughs> um, and so it, it, it's, it's great to kind of reflect back and, and, and see how much progress we made as a company, but I also personally looking back saying, wow, so far in, in, in this period of time. And so Helion is our, for those who don't know, it's, it's the name of our overall cloud portfolio. So it includes our, our different software technologies, our hardware systems, our services, um, and it, it is basically how do we provide enter enterprises end-to-end -end cloud capabilities, not just for the new, but also how do we help them make the journey with, from their traditional to the, the cloud native. Um, so this, at this event this week, our big announcement is Helion Cloud System 9, and that's, Cloud Systems are flagship private cloud solution that customers use to, you know, out of the box, build and get up and running um, a cloud environment um, for infrastructure or platform services. Uh, and so this is our, our, our bread, and brothers, bread and butter solution. Uh, we have thousands of customers around the world. And the, the big parts of that announcement this week are, we're shipping our full Helion platform inside cloud system for, for the first time. That, that's Helion OpenStack and our Helion Cloud Foundry development platform that gives customers the ability to build um, both infrastructure as well as cloud native applications um, in the same environment. Um, we're also building in support for Helion Eucalyptus so customers can run AWS workloads on premise. Um, and as I mentioned uh, in, in the keynote uh, on, on our main stage, it's probably the number one customer requirement that we're, we're meeting with this release is customers are asking us uh, for end-to-end -end IT management. Not just cloud, not just traditional, but how they bridge it all together. How do you orchestrate and automate over everything that they have? Uh, because that's what they look to HP for. They look to us for full IT, not just a slice of that portfolio. So our tools with cloud service automation that ship with cloud system are really critical in doing that. So people should think of your group as a solutions group yeah. that I going to go to, if I have a cloud and I have a problem and I want a solution to that problem, I call you. And, and the different groups, the server group, the storage group, they're essentially arms dealers to you, is that right? Yeah, you we're, build we're solutions out of those. basically, we're, we're measured through our attached to everything in HP, and we're an overlay group to all the other business units themselves. So a good way to describe it is someone asked me, they said, Bill, do you have a, a public cloud sales team or a private cloud sales team or a VPC? No, we have a cloud sales team. So we sit down with the customer and say, what are you trying to solve? What are you trying to do? And then there's multiple pieces of our portfolio that we bring to bear into that. So Gonzalo, I wonder if we could turn our attention to Senese. So talk about Senese as an organization and, and what's your, your role there? Well, Senese is an in independent system operator. We are in charge of handling the whole electricity network uh, countrywide in Ecuador. So we are responsible to provide a very special public service, that's electricity. So in order to do so, we have to take advantage of best IT solutions like Cloud Helium, for instance, in order to improve our processes, the agility, to reduce the cost, to reduce the time to deploy apps. So that's that's the main concern. So, interesting business. So let's talk about your business a little bit, if we may. So, uh, very capital intensive. You try to exactly. avoid making those capital expenditures if you can't. You try to be more efficient so you can avoid that. Uh, you can't go down. <laughs> when, exactly. and you have to be responsive when there's was a problem, natural disaster, accidents, and so forth. What are the pressures 
in your business? I mean, I'm speaking from a U.S. perspective, but maybe you can help us sort of localize what's going on in your business in your part of the world. Well, in Ecuador, the, the provision of electricity, besides the technical complexity, has two important components, political components and social components. Mm -hmm. That makes special this kind of service provision in Ecuador. And besides the, the, the business challenges in Ecuador, we are part of the electricity interconnection. So we will have a whole market starting with Colombia down to Chile. So electric, electrical regional interconnection imposes a big challenge for Senase. We would like in the future to become a, a regional operator, not just operator of Ecuador, but the electricity operator of the region. So that's one of the of the challenges that we have to face. Well, you have to get permission to do that, obviously, exactly. right? You can't just drive in and say, okay, no, we're no, going to no, start no. a business in we Chile. We have to show <laughs> that we have the best standards, the best people, the best end-to-end -end solutions, and be able to provide world-class services. So there's, the, and there's, so there's pricing, which is regulated, exactly. right? So you have to be very efficient, the safety, um, and then the social responsibility, of exactly. course. Uh, there's, you know, it's coal, a lot of this is coal fired, and so you have to balance that. Um, you know, the, important, the important thing is that in Ecuador, we are deploying eight new hydro stations. For year 2016, the demand of electricity in Ecuador will be supplied 95% by, by hydroelectricity. And, and what is it today? Wow. 50, about 50%. 50. So still so pretty, pretty 90, significant uh, 95% hydro. will be hydro. So, so we will be able to export green energy to Colombia and Peru. And besides that also, the, the government is replacing gas for cooking instead of using electricity. So we are deploying 3.5 million induction stoves to replace gas and using electricity. So they imposes a very big challenge to handle the electricity network. So then we have to have some sort of partnership, like HP, we have been working with HP 25 years ago. Uh, I see, so, okay, so you're replacing LNG with, with electricity, exactly. and the source of LNG is the well, United States probably, yes, right? Exactly. So, yeah. but, you know, to connect three and a half million stoves right. to the grid imposes a very high challenges of operating that complex system. Okay, so you have a lot going on in your business, so now let's connect it back to your IT infrastructure. So you've got HP, maybe take us through sort of what your infrastructure looks like. You know, when you are an independent system operator, you have two dimensions, IT and OT, because we are, you, you are in charge of operating the network. You have to supervise generation, transmission, distribution, transmission lines, and issue commands over that infrastructure. So one of the challenges is convergence between IT and OT, and to use the best of cloud, big data, BI, in order to have this predictable, predictive BI in order to foresee future problems in the management of the network. So we have to put three important things. Cloud, BI, big data, because we got a lot of information, real-time information from the system. So the, the challenge is that we have to deal with real-time operation. You know, electricity is different from another industries because you have to generate electricity at the same time when the demand comes. So the challenge is real-time operation using cloud, BI, and big data. So how are you using your analytics to predict essentially where demand is going to be and make sure that you can deliver that demand, is that right? Or? For instance, we sample information from the substations and generation 60 times every second. 60 times every second. So you can imagine the quantity, the volume of information. And then we can process that information to identify patterns of possible instability of the system. We work interconnected Ecuador and Colombia grids. So if we see some behavior that doesn't fit the standard way of doing things, we can predict if we don't take preventive actions, we will have a blackout in the future. Mm -hmm. Okay, now talk, talk more about your cloud. What does what your cloud look we, like and what have, are you doing? We have deployed a, a 
private cloud, Helium, and, and we have started, of course, with the infrastructure as a service. We have reduced the, the time of attending those requirements before it took several weeks. And now we have deployed that in, in a couple of days. But of course, we are in the near future, we will use PaaS as a service in order to develop applications that are specific to the utilities. And uh, of course, in the end, we will have a, an a hybrid cloud to connect to the, to the public cloud in order to have a holistic management of all the IT resources. So Bill, if you were on a client visit with Gonzalo, what, what would you ask him? What would you want to know from him? Yeah, so we, the, the, the pattern that Gonzalo described of starting with a private cloud and extending out to build a hybrid infrastructure is, is, is right in line with our strategy and what the pattern that we see from lots of customers like, like what they're doing in Ecuador because the business criticality of that workload, providing energy, the regulation, the political environment, the, you know, th those are issues that HP deals with very well. That's right in our wheelhouse of what we're doing. So we often use the phrase, you know, getting to a hybrid cloud through the private cloud. And so that's exactly what Gonzalo's doing in his environment. So the types of things I, I would look at is, and talk to him about are, they're, they're using infrastructure as a service today. What sort of hybrid technologies does he need in the future? What sort of types of applications do they want to build, particularly in things like big data? Do they want to do uh, you know, analytical applications over and reason over that data that they're collecting from all the different environments? Um, and, what, and what application environment do they want to build those in? To make sure that we on the product side are building the right tools and connectors and capabilities that, that he needs as he expands out. So where is your application portfolio going, Gonzalez? We, we talked about, you got systems of record. Exactly. Now you're talking about business intelligence and big data and systems of intelligence, is, essentially. Is that where, where your application emphasis is going? Real-time applications imposes two very demanding requirements, cybersecurity and performance. Cybersecurity and performance. So we have deployed deploy in the private cloud several corporate applications. And as mentioned in, in the keynote, we have to move the apps from the traditional IT to, to the cloud. But we have to prioritize the different apps where we can fit them, rehost, to put mm -hmm. uh, native applications in the cloud. So it's, it's, a, it's a journey, it's a path. We have to know exactly how many apps, what are the characteristics, and then decide how to move from the traditional IT to the cloud. So we have developed a complete program, a time schedule, and we feel that in the following two years we will be able to, to move most of our apps that are currently running using traditional IT to the cloud. And a lot of what, what we do with our customers is that application portfolio assessment. So we, we exactly. sit down and say, let's look at the entire app portfolio and essentially tag which types of applications need to be moved as is, sort of lift and shift, versus which types of applications could be refactored entirely into a new model. We're doing this inside HVIT. We're, as we separate the companies, we're building a lot of our new IT systems on Helion and doing that same assessment and rebuilding applications to the new platform, to cloud native styles. But for, for most customers, they have to have a range of, of capabilities. Some, some is just running a virtual machine, some is running in a true PaaS or SaaS-like environment and all sorts of shades of gray in between. Uh, so what we do, the most successful engagements we have is deeply understand the portfolio of applications and help the customers understand what's ready, what's not, and then what are the options along the way. So that's part of your services organization. Yeah, so it's part of our assessment that we do through through services, and, and so there's two parts of this, two sides of one coin. There's the assessment and making sure that we have a cloud platform that meets a broad set of those needs, and that's what the Helium platform really is. Everything from infrastructure to full platform as a service. Yeah, so I mean, that's the, the lifeblood of the, the uh, of any IT is their application portfolio. That's right, and, yeah. And you have to care for that very carefully, so you're identifying apps that can move, should move, maybe maybe shouldn't, mm -hmm. maybe just leave them alone. Okay, so that's, that's part of it. So Gonzalo, I have the same question I asked Bill, but in reverse. So you've got the top HP executive, he's got all the resources of, of HP at, at his disposal. What would you ask 
Bill when he comes to visit you? Well, you know, we just have had a meeting with the people from HP Ecuador in order to decide and to agree upon which are the next steps to go to this path to the cloud. And I think one of the principal topics and issues is to have the people at HP Ecuador at the channel and also the customer well prepared to go to this path together. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to guarantee the success. We cannot go along, no, it's not HP, it's not just the, the, the distribution channel in Ecuador. We have to put all the effort together in order to be successful with the project. So you're looking for a partnership? Yes, exactly. And a big part of that initiative. You have to invest. Yeah. You have to invest for that partnership because it's a long-term relationship. W where do you want that investment to be? Is it people, Ed education, time, education, transfer of knowledge? Exactly, education. That's, that's a, a very specific topic. If you have well-prepared people with the proper attitude, then you diminish the risks of, of an unsuccessful project. How much of how much of the relationship gets into beyond the technology, into the people and process side, where where the really hard stuff comes in? Yeah. Um, how how do you work together in that regard? Yeah. Well, there, uh, it, 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 the education is something we hear all the time as people are trying to understand that journey to the cloud, that transition to the cloud. Because it's one thing to have the technologies, it's quite another to have an existing IT group or development group who says, I, I don't know what to do with it. I don't know, how do I, how do I even you know, begin to make that transition? And then from a management point of view, how do I organize for this? What's a DevOps org chart look like, right? Mm -hmm. I get that question all the time. It's sort of a silly question a little bit because you wouldn't have a DevOps org chart, but what they're really asking for is, as I make that move, how does the org and my people move with it? And, and what's the right speed and, and cadence to do it and what type of group should do it? So we hear the education question a lot and the training a lot. And the way, the way that we address that is we have a set of, of, of service offerings and content, of course, depending on the customer. And sometimes we actually do full education classrooms on site with customers and walk them through training side by side. We have some scenarios where, where if a, a large service provider wants to learn how to operate Helion will bring them to our NOC, our network operator, that where we run our public cloud. Mm -hmm. And they sit side by side with our operators to see how we run a live service. So it depends on where the customer's at and what, and what they sort of need, but it is very much a common requirement right now. So Gazal, what about the, the DevOps you know, situation? Uh, what are you doing in regard to, to DevOps? Or sometimes I like to call it Ops Dev, but a lot of times what people are doing is they're training their operations people to be more dev-like. Dev That's probably the more common situation mm -hmm. that we see What's, what's happening in your oper operation? Well, I think that one of the key points to assure the success of this kind of projects is to involve the strategic personnel at the, at the business. So, cloud is not just an IT hmm. innovation uh, project. We have to use EA, enterprise architecture, in order to check the goals of the business, and then how the cloud change business. Not just the business, it's, it's changing the, the way of living. Especially in the utility sector, for instance, we are using uh, smart grids. Yeah. That means electrical vehicles, smart home appliance. So we have to put everything, cloud, internet of everything, communications, so we have to have an, a holistic view of the way of living, the business, and then the IT to put everything together. So, so let's talk, I was going to ask you about Internet of, of Things and, and what you're doing there. Smart grids you mentioned. Smart uh, cities. Smart cities, it's infrastructure smart for services. electric cars. Yes. All right, and that's a lot of data. Yes, So maybe you could talk about that a little bit and how that's, you know, sort of give us a roadmap as to where you're going there. Well, in Ecuador we are deploying a smart grid program, but in order to, to deploy all these initiatives, like smart homes, like electrical vehicles, you have to have a very strong electricity network. You have to have a very good communication platform. You have to have the cloud in order to use all those IT resources to have better way of living, better public services, better electricity, better water supply, better waste management, better security, be improve the safety. 
So it helps to have an, a holistic view and the focus is people. People, business, and IT. Mm. Now how about um, new apps? You know, we talk about the cloud native apps, mobile apps, OpenStack. What are you doing in that regard? Is that a sort of separate initiative as you sort of slowly migrating you know, existing apps into that new world? How are you bridging and, and, and what are you doing in terms of the new sort of application development paradigm? We're slow moving to the cloud because we have to be very careful with cyber security. Cyber security, we have to be very careful because we are not just IT, we are OT people. We are in charge of managing the infrastructure of the grid. But we have, as, a, as I said, a time schedule, a program to move those apps from the traditional IT to the cloud. We feel that in the following two years, we will be able to have those apps running within the cloud. Yeah, because your customers want you to go there, but you have to be exactly. careful getting there. Yes, exactly. Uh. Otherwise, maybe we will be exposed to some cyber security problems. So this is an interesting example. Bill, we're, we're almost out of time. I'll give you the last word. You got We always talk about the digital economy. You guys mm -hmm. are calling it the idea economy. Every business is going through some kind of digital transformation. There's, your industry is amazing, what's, what's going on there with data and, and digitization. So, so, Bill, I'll give you the last word. Um, where do you want to take customers like, like Gonzalo um, over the next three to five years? Uh, well, well, Senese and, and Gonzalo, they're, they're the, the type of customers that we work great with because they, they are solving a, a large business critical, I mean, it's energy for a country, right? Mm -hmm. This is a utility. It's not a website for reserving, you know, a rental in the, on the beach, right? I, I love that service, by the way, but this is a different level of criticality, and this is where HP shines, where we can come in and help a customer be aggressive in their goals, but without putting their business at risk. And so we can come in and help with the assessments, but also with the technologies to help them get there in, the, in a fast, but, but logical and pragmatic way. So when we look at these transitions, we, we start with what are the business outcomes they're trying to drive, right? It's not just, can I get a better VM for cheaper? Can I spin up object storage? Or do I have a Node.js framework for an apps? We don't start there. We start with what are you trying to achieve with Senase in Ecuador and your target markets? And then we work back from those business goals to say, okay, what are the technologies and solutions that can help you reach that as fast as possible? So one of the learnings I've had over dealing with many, many customers with cloud computing is really identify the TCO, the ROI, whatever metric you want, identify the value at the workload level, not at the cloud level. Don't say like, should I go to the cloud? That doesn't make any sense. Ask the question, if I want to go and get better analytics from my substations, what's the improvement you want to see? Do you want to have more insight or 30% cost savings or higher performance? Like measure as discrete as possible for that given workload. You can then make the decision, should I use these technologies mm -hmm. or not and when, exactly. right? Because in some cases, infrastructure as a service might be all they need for a while. In other cases, exactly. you might need to write a new app. Right. But until you have that discrete understanding, it's very hard to, and that's what we specialize in. We can go into industries and verticals like utilities, or financial services, or federal customers, whatever it may be, and deeply understand the context of their business problem. Sound, sound advice, Bill. Uh, envision the business result. Start there, don't start with the technology. Gonzalo, great story. Thank you very much for, you. for sharing that My with our pleasure. audience. All right, we're extracting the data. Uh, you want more data, go to wikibon.com, check out all the free research. SiliconAngle.com's got the news. SiliconAngle.tv, we have videos like this up very, very quickly. Huge video archive, check out CrowdChat net slash HP Discover. We got all kinds of crowd chats going on. And also hpdiscover.social. It's a stream of social data from HP Discover. This is theCUBE, everybody. We'll be right back right after this.